Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this video in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you are here. If you're so inclined and you have the time, please hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps uh, me get the video out to other people and hopefully expose new audiences to my content. And for you guys, it lets you notify when I upload new videos and when I decide to go live outside of Friday nights, if there's nothing going on and people are looking to go live, that's one of the things that the bell icon is kind of good for. But I appreciate you being here, so we'll jump right into it today. And what I wanted to do is go through my collection and look at what I consider five really good value titanium pocket knives um, that have all stayed in my collection and all have um, get a lot of utility, get a lot of pocket time, and they're all, I want to say, sub $150 knives. So everybody likes different styles, different designs, so this is going to kind of encompass a lot of that, but really what I was looking for were those knives that really stick out is great values, good knives, good materials, um, and well, well executed designs. So starting out, we're gonna look at the Jacob Lundquist QVIS variant. This knife is extra special to me because it was gifted to me by Sobex Scooter. Sobex um, is, is one of our brothers in the community. He's always in live streams, fantastic human being. He and I are very good friends. I love him like a brother and uh, can't wait to wrangle him to a, to a blade show or just, just somewhere where we can meet up in person. But he sent me this out because he wasn't altogether taken by it. It had the natural G10 scales and he thought I might enjoy it. It is the version one. You'll notice it doesn't have that flipper up top that sticks up, which to be quite honest with you, I'm a flipper kind of guy or flicker kind of guy, so I don't miss that front flipper tab. But it's got this unique kind of sway back handle that actually works in the hand really well. To me, it's just a very neutral knife, very comfortable knife, kind of a Warncliffe sheep's footy blade that is a... Uh, it's just very slicey. The action on it is very good. Um, I actually upgraded this knife because Jacob on his site releases different scale options. Um, and he released these titanium scales. And guys, these things were 40 bucks. They are milled out the steel inset liners that are in the QVIS. God, I didn't bring another flashlight over here. I'm recording all these videos kind of at one time. But um, if you look down in here, you'll see that those steel, that steel liner insets into the titanium scale. So it's a little bit milled out. It's a thinner titanium scale, but it's very well done. I mean, it looks very nice. It's very weighty in the hand because it complements those steel liners and that 14C 28N blade. And this knife with the scales is gonna come in right around $100. So um, I think they're $90, if I'm not mistaken, if you buy them in titanium, but I, like I said, got mine gifted to me, looked at the value of that, and then looked at what I paid for the scales. Thank you, Sobek Scooter. Thank you all for checking this one out, but this is definitely one that is one of my top fives in terms of value per dollar for what you get, how it feels in the hand, the, the action, how it deploys, how it cuts, just a really good knife, and that's the QVIS Variant PE version one. So moving on, the second knife is a unique one that some of y'all may have seen, some of you not, may not have seen, but it is the first full titanium Asher Knives Spiro. Not the one with the thumb hole, because it's a little bit higher in cost, not too much, but this is the one that has the thumb studs. This is actually one of my favorite Asher Knives. It came this way, it was did not require any mods, has a nice titanium pocket clip, really nice titanium lock side here, super nice show side, very smooth with a reversible clip, removable thumb studs, if you're a sharpener like me, that comes in handy, S35VN blade steel, steel lock bar insert, snappy detent, the S35VN blade, 
has really good edge retention. I've sharpened it, put a fresh edge on it. Um, didn't feel like I was getting through bad steel. You do have the little Asher Knives logo that they put on all their knives, which I'm fine with that. And then they mark the blade steel here. But it's just a nice stonewash package. Um, very good EDC size knife. Very good action on bearings. It does the middle flick well. It does the thumb stud flick well. It's just, uh, just a hardy little specimen, guys. And it feels good in the hand. And when these guys were available, and if they're available, I want to say they were around $96 in full tie. And that is the Asher Spiro Titanium Version 1. So that is just another fantastic knife. One of my top fives in that value range. You get a lot more than you pay for, and I feel like these knives punch way over their weight. So moving on, we'll come to probably one of the biggest surprises that I wish I could remember the... Uh, Instagram buddy of mine that pointed this out when they saw that I was into two suns. This is the two sun TS269. And what I can say about this knife is as you look it over, and if my camera will do it justice, and you can see the milling that's in this titanium around the pivot, if you can see the crosshatch milling that kind of fades into a straight milling that then goes into a swirled milling and then checkers off at the end. In terms of what all is going on with the facing of this knife and the contouring, it is exquisite. It has got a nice, probably quarter to a third inch solid back spacer. When I look at this knife, I think even though it's got a snappier detent, I feel that this knife probably has the action of, and I say probably, I've handled them, um, it does not, you know, Chris Reeves don't fly out, at least the one that I handled, A to Z EDCs, but this knife is very refined. It is very, um, very thin, uh, milled out, titanium handles, steel lock bar insert, wonderful clip, a little bit too much oil coming out there. That's part of it. It's, a, um, I want to say it's a night morning design. It is um, D2, so that's for a lot of people might be a deal breaker. For me, it's not because, again, I know that some D2, depending on how I use it, and as long as I take care of it, and I'm in a very human state, I'm going to be in good shape. I love the swedge on this blade. It really catches your finger. You've got a nice, tall, flat grind here, a little bit of a clip point with a nice swedge that comes down. And again, it fits your hand perfectly, and I really wish I could, you could see the transitions in this milling um, that I could get you better, better looks at that because it's done really, really well. And let me, uh, since we haven't cut yet, and as I always say, people wonder if I ever cut. This is just paper, so this doesn't really count. But yes, this knife is... As far as a Tucson goes, it's my most slicey Tucson because the blade geometry is just set up to cut. It cuts all the way through the blade. You can listen to that. It's making very little resistance as it slices through that paper. And just, I mean, I'm horizontal, but that thing slowly hydraulically falls into place. It does flip out if you want it to. It does slow roll very nicely if you want it to. Just a fantastic knife d2 steel titanium with just exquisite milling and i picked this guy up for 94 dollars 99 cents the reason i know that is because i keep a spreadsheet and i picked this up at white mountain knives and used the code lefty 10 which saved me 10 percent and it just turned out to be a win when the knife came in I reached out to and I need to go back through my DM messages and find out who brought this to my attention because it's been one of the biggest surprises because when I look at this knife it's not the type of knife that I would normally go for had I not known the experiences that my brother who reached out had with this knife. One of the things I kind of think is lame but it's okay that they do it because they've got to have pride in their workmanship too is it does say two sun knives on this pivot kind of elegantly done made in Yingling, China. So, you know, I'm not going to give that a hard time because that's showing uh, pride in manufacturing. And I don't care if you're an American company 
or you're a Chinese company or you're a Vietnamese company or an Indian company, if you take pride in your work, that's just what we all hope to do. You know, when it comes down to it, all politics aside, all people trying to do their best, and if they're proud enough to put where they're making their knives, I give them hats off, and I'm thankful for that. So that's the Tucson TS-269 and D2 for under 95 bucks, just a great value. And then this knife is a little bit confusing, only because depending on when you find it, where you find it, the pricing can vary greatly. And this is the Kube or Kubi Vagrant. And this is a knife that I think punches way over its weight. It uses T8 hardware all the way around, very deep titanium T8 hardware that, um, that is really sticky, really deep, and that shows me quality. Um, it is a frame lock with S35VN. It is a flipper hole deployment only, whether you thumb flick it, which I hate doing, so I'm not even going to attempt it or if you middle finger flick it, it is just a very well put together knife. It's got nice jimping, just a really nice medium sized knife that fits my hand very well. It does have a doodad hole. I left this out, but so does the uh, Tucson TS-269 has a doodad hole. Um, unfortunately, the Asher and the Kvist do not have doodad holes, but um, that's okay. They're not all going to be perfect for everyone, but again, these are great value knives. This guy has a fantastic sharpening choil where you've got the plunge grind that ends all the way back here, right where my thumbnail is. So I've got many good sharpenings, nice titanium sides, nice blue titanium hardware, titanium clip. This backspacer is integrated into the lanyard hole. Um, the action on this knife is fantastic. And you can get these on Amazon now for, I wanna say about $160. But if you're patient, I picked up this knife for $101. I wanna say it was $101.14 according to my spreadsheet. I grabbed it on Amazon. Um, I did not get it at White Mountain Knives, and it is just one that you have to kind of look out for because they do make it in G10, they make it in other materials, but since I'm rating my top five mid-range value knives, the Kubi Vagrant comes in at number two because it's really that good, guys. I love this knife. I love the shape of it. At first, I wasn't that enthralled with the look of it, but I've really grown to love it. I carry it quite a bit, and it is a winner. Which brings us to our number one, which was also my number one value knife of 2022. And I'm proud to report back that after Captain Jared Neves got his relationship solidified with Blade HQ and um, has done an affiliate program with them, it seems that the pricing on the Black Mira has leveled back out to where it is $142 for this titanium version. And if you go for the uh, carbon fiber inset, it's $148, which to me, guys, is just an amazing value on an amazing knife. Probably the smallest Max Ace that I've seen, but what Max Ace does, whether they're doing a huge Beard of Doom, awesome space knife, or they're doing a small EDC knife like this, they not only use quality materials, but they use quality well thought out designs and they use quality fit and finish, quality put, just basically quality designs that are done well. So the first thing I love about the uh, Max Ace Black Mira is the ergonomics. As you'll notice, it's a very natural rounded handle that just literally sucks into your hands. So in terms of cutting with this knife, regardless of what type of grip or what type of cutting I'm trying to do, this knife fits the bill. The sharpening choil terminates here with my swedge. I've got a good quarter of an inch worth of sharpenings, an eighth worth of an inch worth of sharpenings on this tall, flat ground, stone wash blade with a deployment hole only, which is perfect for me. And this has got some of the deepest T8 screws or bolts that are the Chicago style bolts, which I love. So 
What that means is the pivot comes out and this one Chicago style bolt is kind of like what Hinderer uses where your actual T8 uh, comes out. It's just a really well done screw. You've got these brass appointments here that are kind of nice if you like brass. I personally wish that they weren't there, but that's the way this knife comes. And for the value that it is, I was not gonna split hairs there. The access to the liner is just well done you've got this nice milling here on the lock bar face so you get positive traction you've got a nice steel lock bar insert and let's see if it cuts paper just to keep the doubters at bay and it may not because i've run this through a lot of cardboard recently but it's m390 seems to be heat treated very well because it does, I don't do measured cut tests, but I've spent a couple of Sundays cutting cardboard with this and haven't sharpened it since. So yeah, it's very sharp, very thin behind the edge, very well done. I did, not because I needed to, because I bought some skiff bearings for my Brian Brown Jaeger, which will be coming up soon with the full long-term review. Stay tuned for that. But the Jaeger is tuned so well, spoiler alert, that it just did not need bearings. And as I was looking through the bearing compatibility guide, I saw that the bearings that I had for the um, Jaeger were the same size as the Black Mirror. And this was one of the easier knives to disassemble because it only has the pivot screw and the body screw here to take out. And I put in those uh, skiff bearings that really, whether it makes a difference in the droppiness or not, it definitely, as I've Flip it back gives it a lot more stability in the side to side. I just think skiff bearings are done very well. Um, I think for $12 on a knife that's $142, it does give me a little added value, a little added action, and I just enjoy it. So, guys, that is my or those are my top five titanium value i say value mid-range value knives that punch well over their weight um, again are they the best knives in my collection no are they the best value knives in my collection for what they are i think they are now if i go back through my collection and see anything different or see another that need to be brought out and just made aware of because they are available from time to time and they are that good i will bring them to you and it's not uncommon as my channel continues to evolve and I continue to put out content that you might see things that you've seen before. But that's okay, guys. It's just because, again, I'm sharing my thoughts and my thoughts evolve as I use these knives and live with these knives. But what I want you each to know is I love you all and I'm so appreciative of the fact that you've joined me in my channel and you watch my content and you share these experiences with me and you come to my live streams. Again, I ask that you subscribe if you haven't, just so you're notified when I uh, release videos, and it does help me get the videos out to more people who might enjoy them. Most importantly, I ask that you look out for the guy or gal over there to your left. Look out for the guy or gal over there to your right. Look out for each other as you're through the chats, as you're reaching out for maybe you need help and you know somebody in the community who is willing to help you. And if you don't know somebody in the community who's willing to help you, reach out to me because everyone in the community is willing to help you. It's a loving place. Move forward with love in your heart. If you disagree with somebody, try debate before hate. Till we meet again, guys. Peace.